Uh, I will mention that in just a minute. Um, uh, about the quiz. So I've gotten feedback from the students that the quizzes are easier than the homework. Yes, they are supposed to be. But this one will be um, significantly easier than homework seven. Homework seven is, it turned out to be pretty tough. Um, so this will be easier than that. Um, uh, Hadarshi, um, Hadar is asking about office hours. So I want to help as many people as I can before the quiz. Uh, what happened to quiz three? Remember we combined quiz two and, and quiz three. So the last one we had was quizzes two and three smashed together. Um, so help before the, the quiz. So um, help slash office hours before quiz four. Um, I'll be around Friday morning from 9 a.m. to 11.45 a.m. Um, I will also be able to help people on Monday uh, we will do um, 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. All of this will be in uh, room uh, 112 or the course Zoom. So Hadar, does that answer your question? Yes, this will be a shorter quiz. So this will be the length of quiz one. It's going to be two questions. Um, one of them may have a short essay component. But it will be two questions. Let's see. Oh no. Oh, we're good. I saw this, and I'd been changing lenses a lot to do stuff, and I'm like, did I mess up my camera sensor again? But no, that's on the chalkboard. Um, yes, room 112 in the physics building. Uh, it is where in-person recitations are for many of you. Um, many of you go to room 112 for recitation. Uh, yes, there may, you may have you may be asked to respond in a couple of sentences to uh, to a situation uh, based on. So on Tuesday we will have a, a short conversation before the quiz, and the on on how science works, not on what science has discovered, but how science works in the first place. And some of that material may um, may show up in an essay question. I'm still trying to to figure that out. So this is the, the schedule of what is coming up. Um, also, you know, come to think of it, I can also help people before the quiz on Tuesday. So we'll say that I will be around to help people as well for any last minute stuff. Um, uh, we'll do Tuesday. Uh, 9 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. Uh, and this will be Zoom or Room 215. Um, one thing that we should get, yes, there is a loon on the door. Um, this, we <laughs> Loons are kind of the icon of the Adirondack Mountains. And... I had the good fortune of seeing some. So there they are. Got some pictures from a boat, and I was blind because I dropped my uh, dropped my eyeglasses in the lake that same day. And the picture that you're seeing under that uh, is a photograph of the night sky taken by by our physics major and physics uh, coach, not in our class, uh, Shining Lee. Actually, she is in our class, of course. Derp. Shining is, is helping out a lot with our class. For some reason, I was thinking she was doing another class as well. Sorry, Lisa. 
Okay, now the autofocus is messed up and I have to fix it. Okay, now we're back. All right, camera on tripod. So yes, there's a loon. Okay, camera fixed. So this is what's coming up. Um, loons are pretty awesome. They uh, fly all the way across the country, dive like 60 feet down bottom of the ocean, uh, catch fish, and they will also stab foxes to death with their beaks. So don't mess with loons. Um, all right. So any questions about these announcements before we do some physics? Because we got a lot to, to talk about today. I'm just going to close the blinds to reduce the glare on the board. There we go. Can we explain the wording and setup for question three? So uh, Quinwit, uh, which question? Is, is this question three on homework six or okay on homework homework six so let's go find that so I'm just uh, switching back to my browser the here let's see we don't want YouTube let's get out of that get out of full screen darn it Hang on, having. There we go. So let's load the homework six. We're going to talk about homework six, problem three. Ah, okay. So what's going on in problem six? So let's let's read. The astronaut is back drifting in space, but now they're confident enough in using their jetpack to. Um, maneuver around and, and control their own mo motion. And they say, OK, now they, they want to get back home. So they are moving at one meter per second currently in the x direction. So these are ordered pairs, like in you learned in math class. So they're moving at one meter per second in the x direction. Uh, the airlock is in the plus y direction from them. So they need to use their jetpack to change their velocity instead to be in the plus y direction. So <clears throat> our, let's, let's draw this. Our person is drifting this way at one meter per second. And then later, they want to turn. So their spaceship is up here. They want to make it to that point. So they want to now instead change their velocity to 0.4 meters per second that way. You can't see the board. Thank you. Zoop. All right, there we are. Sorry, I'm a little bit discombobulated because I had uh, too much equipment to mess with today. This is why broadcast studios have more than one person running them. Um, so if my astronaut is going this way and then they want to go that way, what do they have to do? Yes, it goes zoop. That's the sound my little fade button on Open Broadcaster Studio makes as it goes zoop. So what must my astronaut do if they want to stop going to the right and instead go up? They want to change their velocity, but you know momentum is conserved. So here, um, you know the momentum is mass times velocity, which their momentum is going to be to the right, and here, their momentum is mass times velocity, which is to the up. So how will my astronaut change their velocity from right to up? Momentum's got to be conserved, right? And Christopher Vinn says they must release gas with momentum equal to the change in momentum they want. Is it equal or is it something not quite equal? So Christopher, um, I'm going to clarify what you've said. They have to release gas from their jetpack with momentum that's equal to the change in momentum they want. So they want their momentum to stop being to the right and start being up. 
It's got to be opposite. Yes, R. Martin. So their momentum stopped being right and started being up. So yes, as, as McGanley's farm says, yes, the astronaut also must make their X direction velocity zero because they want to go straight up. That's straight upward. My, <laughs> my art is slightly bad. So which direction is that change? Which, which way do they have to fire their thrusters? Or which way is their momentum changing? Yeah, the jetpack has to, to fire some gas down and to the right. Because by doing that, you know, so one way to think of this, um, and this is really, really handy for all <coughs> conservation of momentum situations, is to draw before and after pictures. This is, you'll see what that is in a minute, that thing that went crash. So we're going to get really good at cartooning. So before, I have my astronaut moving this way at one meter per second. After, I know I have my astronaut, they will be yellow, moving this way at 0.4 meters per second, but I also have a cloud of gas moving that way in some direction I don't know. Um, well, I know that it, it is moving at, uh, I've told you I believe it was 300 meters per second, but you don't know its mass and you don't know its direction. So that's what you have to figure out. And Porpoise has said, well, I can figure out it must go more right than down because I need to change my x velocity by one meter per second, but I need to change my y velocity only by uh, 0.4 of meter per second. So uh, who asked for this question? Uh, Quinn, does this answer your questions about this? Ah, and Sam Squanch, which is the best name, has pointed out that the astronaut's mass changes in this. And this is a really, really, really good question. So Sam, Sam Squanch, how should I handle the fact that the astronaut's mass changes? What do I do? So Porpoise said it makes it really hard, so we ignored it. Yeah, Quinn, um, let's, while everybody's thinking about how to deal with the changing mass, Quinn says, can we do only one momentum equation? So if you say only one, let me erase this now. We know that the total initial momentum equals the total final momentum. But how many equations is this? It's two equations, yes, your 3z halo. This really means both the initial x momentum equals the initial or the final x momentum, and independently, that the initial y momentum equals the final y momentum. So it's going to be two equations. Um, so question about the masses. So Luke said, oh, it kept the mass the same. Um, this is a case where 
thinking carefully about the engineering reality is better than being uh, a, a mindless calculator. So, uh, oh, and Porpoise has said we could do this with direction and magnitude too. Yes, yes. There, there are different ways to think about the geometry. I find this to usually be simpler. Um, in the dealing with the mass, this gas is going to be a small fraction of the mass of the astronaut. And you know that. You know, like this is 300 meters per second. So the astronaut is not going to be releasing like 100 kilograms of gas. Um, so you could say, you know what, if I pretend the mass doesn't change, it's close enough. But you only, you have to think before doing that. Sometimes that's not true. Uh, the problem that you did yesterday with the Saturn V in recitation, that wasn't true because most of the Saturn V is gas or rocket propellant. So yeah, if you want to make that approximation, you can in this question after thinking about it and justifying it. Um, again, Lee's farm. So we need an M1 and an M2, but would the astronaut be M1 and would M2 be the mass of the gas? Yeah, if you wanted to do it completely uh, rigorously, then yes, yes, you would, you know. Before, you would say, okay, my astronaut is carrying some compressed gas with them, and that compressed gas then got propelled out the, the jetpack. Bouncy ball. The mass of the astronaut would change because they propelled a cloud of gas out of their thruster, and that gas has some mass. They were carrying it with them before, but now it's floating out in space. And in this case, it's not that much, right? But in some cases, it's a huge amount, and you actually have to do some calculus to understand the, the, um, the continuous changing of the mass uh, of a rocket. Um, this is not something we're going to do here uh, unless you all want to, but um, it's something you need to think about in rocketry. Uh, yes, Luke. So think about the, the direction again. They are going horizontally and then they want to go vertically. So any other questions about other problems in the homework? We have time to maybe talk about one more homework question before um, I talk about other stuff. Yes, Hadar. Uh, it, before, their mass is 250 kilograms. Afterwards, their mass is less than that. But you might say, well, it's only going to be, you know, a few hundred grams of gas or something, so I don't really need to worry about it. Prince Brian wants to talk about, uh, okay, user namer uh, 273. So homework seven, we got to talk about the stuff on homework seven first. Uh, there, well, the questions on homework seven that involve rotation, we're going to do today. So uh, if you're asking about question four on homework six, we can talk about that. But questions on homework seven, we don't know how to do yet. Ah, you want to talk about the question from Portal. You want to talk about this one? Whoops. That one. Um, So what are your questions about it? Freddie, Prince Brian. Okay, I uh, guess there aren't questions about that. So uh, is there one other homework question not about rotating things that you all want to talk about? We'll, we'll actually delay that till the end. We, we may have time for another homework question at the end uh, or a recitation question, but uh, now I want to talk about a new idea. So this new idea has to do with um, rotation. And this is the first 
uh, rotational idea that we have studied here in, in Physics 211. It may not be the last, but I want to motivate this with a, a demonstration, first of all. So you know, and I'm, I'm just going to, you're not going to see me because I'll be changing lenses, but I will talk to you as I do that. You know that momentum in some sense is the persistence of movement. That an object that has a high momentum is moving pretty stubbornly and that the more momentum it has, so the faster it is moving or the more mass it has, the harder it is to change the object's um, velocity. What I want to do now is I want to draw an analog with rotating things. Now, rotating things have a mass. They have an angular velocity. So you might say, well, is mass times angular velocity something similar to mass times velocity for ordinary motion? And well, rotating things have another property, which is how their mass is distributed. So I'm just putting another lens on my camera. Whoop. All right, I'm going to have to take the camera off the tripod. You saw a cat. OK, give me a minute. So what we'll see is that just like ordinary objects have ordinary momentum that can be used to understand collisions and explosions and so forth, rotating objects also have a kind of momentum called angular momentum. Uh, just like ordinary, and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I gotta fill so much time, I'm discombobulated with my equipment because of what happened in the beginning. Um, so ordinary momentum is mass times velocity. Angular momentum is something like mass times angular velocity, but it in the same way describes how persistently something is rotating and also is conserved in collisions. So here, so I've now put a super, super duper wide angle lens on my camera. Uh, let's see if I can get out here without knocking over the tripod. All right. <laughs> Once every, yes. It said no signal because I had to turn my camera off. I like had a lens off my camera and was trying very careful, carefully uh, not to bang the um, image sensor and break it. So here I am. I'm now standing on a thing. Let me get you out of the way. Don't want to yeet this too hard. Go over there. I know you roll. Stay. Sit. Stay. All right. So here I'm standing on a thing that can spin. And I have a lot of trouble turning myself. There's not much friction here. So it's very difficult for me to control my angular velocity. I've got here two kettlebells, right? These, are, these have a mass of two kilograms each. So if I take one of these kettlebells, I'm going to point this direction. Again, it's really hard for me to point in a consistent direction here. If I take one of these kettlebells and I put it right in front of my chest like I am now and I throw it straight out, is that going to make me start rotating? Not really. So let's, let's, let's try that. <laughs> Again, it's really tough for me to face in a consistent direction on this because angular momentum is conserved. If I am not rotating, it's hard for me to make myself rotate. So if I just put this in front of my chest and I do that, I don't really start rotating. Uh, I'll talk about the golden record in a minute. But what happens if I put my arm out to the side and throw it? What do we expect then? Yep, Sam's out in the hallway. Are you okay? Yes, I'm, I, I threw a oh. kettlebell. <laughs> it's a projectile. I don't have the medicine ball, so I'm improvising. So I would spin, yes. So imagine looking at me. We'll, we'll draw this on the board, and I know the board is, is small now. But 
if I am here and I am rotating, I can rotate around that point. And if I were to take an object now, well, we'll do a before and after. So if this is the before picture and the after picture, again, I, I'm free to rotate around that point. Yes, you all, you all can see. I'm sorry, it's small. <laughs> and I were to take this kettle, kettlebell, hold my arm out to the side and throw it. <clears throat> so is this relative to me, would this be moving clockwise or counterclockwise? So I throw this, is this, this is counterclockwise, yeah. So actually you can't read that. So CCW in big letters. So which direction should I rotate? So here I have no angular momentum. I am not rotating. So if I throw the kettlebell so it, it has counterclockwise angular momentum, I must spin clockwise, right? So your prediction is that I would spin clockwise after I do that. All right, so let's try that. So I'm going to stand on the thing. I'm going to stick my arm out and throw this. And now I spin clockwise. So it works the way you expected it to work. But now there's something else I can do with these. So what you just saw was, yes, I didn't draw clockwise on the board. Thank you. Sorry, I'm thinking about too many things at the time. That goes that way. Yes. But now I'm going to make myself spin just by pushing on the walls. Right? So here I go. I'm rotating around. Now what's going to happen, you probably know this, what's going to happen if I pull these kettlebells in toward my chest? I'll go faster. So here I go fast, here I go slow, here I go fast. Usually we do this with the student up here. But we only have one person, so we have to improvise. And now I'm dizzy. So here, something is different. Yeah, Asian Shane says, why? And Christopher says, physics. Yes, I look funny. I always look funny. Um, so Porpoise has said you go faster because it's easier to move the mass when it's closer to the center. But let's think about... Um, some mathematics here. Kind of going to motivate the way we think about angular momentum. So what we saw is, and I'm going to write real big up on the board, what we saw is ordinary momentum is mass times velocity. But angular momentum, this new thing we are trying to understand, you might say, well, OK, maybe this is equal to mass times the thing that's like velocity, angular velocity. But we saw here that it's not, right? We saw here that 
when I did this, when I did the, the demo and I, I moved the kettlebells from the outside to the inside, that somehow the distance of the mass from the center matters. Yes, Yulin has said something to do with radius. So <clears throat> it's not mass here, right? It's got to be something else. So we don't know what that thing is yet. So I'm just going to write rotational mass and then say we have to understand what that is. I was going to write WTF, but I probably shouldn't do that on the board. So we need to understand what rotational mass is. There's one other bit of demo that I want to show you. So here I've got, ah, so Yulin says if radius goes up and angular velocity goes down, then it can't be multiplication. Well, it sort of can because the angular momentum stayed the same, right? Because angular momentum is conserved just like ordinary momentum. So if I am here, let's do that again. If I am here and I spin myself around, I somehow am decreasing my rotational mass and increasing my angular velocity so the angular momentum stays the same. So here's some angular momentum. I decrease my rotational mass and in doing so I increase the angular velocity to keep the product constant. Yeah. Here's another thing that I can do. So this is a bicycle wheel uh, that's filled with concrete. It has a mass of maybe five, six, eight, probably eight kilograms. No, five kilograms, eight pounds, like four or five kilograms. So what I'm going to do, if I take this bicycle wheel and I get it spinning, so it is now spinning, as seen from above, it's now spinning clockwise. So what all do you think I'm going to put my foot down so I can't rotate? So if I take this wheel that's spinning clockwise and I turn it over so it's spinning counterclockwise, what will happen to me if I am free to rotate? Yes, porpoises, gyroscope gobur. <laughs> this is a gyroscope. So if I do this, what will happen to my angular velocity? I'm good. Okay, so Michael has said that I am, uh, well, this is, uh, well, Michael, I'll come back to that. Um, so Emerin says, I spin in the opposite direction. So here's a way to understand this. Remember, it's always about before and after pictures. So so we use the letter L for angular velocity. So if, if I am not rotating before, but if the wheel goes clockwise, and then after I rotate the wheel around so that the wheel is rotating counterclockwise, what must my angular momentum be? So L is angular momentum. L is the symbol we use for angular momentum. After this, I will go back to not wide angle of vision and you can see the board better. So L is angular momentum. So you expect me to go clockwise, yes. Because 
the sum of angular momentum before must be equal to the sum of angular momentum after. So it can't be zero because here the wheel is going clockwise, here the wheel is going counterclockwise. So let's now try this. So I've got my, my bike wheel, I, I've got my foot um, placed on the side, so I can't rotate right now. So we'll get it spinning. So it's now rotating clockwise. And if I turn this upside down, then I go clockwise. Whoop. I want to go this way some more. Or maybe I want to go the other way. Right? So I can, I'm standing on this platform, and I can exchange angular momentum with this wheel that I carry. Now, there's a little bit of friction in the system. Right? It's not perfect. Uh, but if there were no friction, if I were, say, in space, then I would have no way at all to change my angular velocity other than exchanging it with another object. So I can now, remember I couldn't like point myself in a fixed direction before? Now I can. Now I can turn around and point myself at the camera. So this is, this is a gyroscope. A gyroscope is just a spinning thing that you carry with you that you can exchange angular momentum with. Now, here is one with two wheels on it. Yep. Uh, one sec. One sec, folks. Sounds yeah, so Sam is here. We're going to do the rocket car at 1210. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he will spawn. Yeah, so we're going to do the rocket car demo at 1210. So here's another one of these. So, all right, same as before, what's going to happen when I turn this over? It's broken. Why is it broken? Did we just, like, turn the law? Did Sam? Sam, did you turn the laws of physics off? Damn it, Sam. He turned the laws of physics off. Yeah, <laughs> they're in opposite directions, right? If I, if I spin them both the same way... Then it works the way you expect. So, whoop. Now, this one doesn't have concrete in it, so it doesn't work quite as well. But we also got this one from Hogwarts. And I think Sam is out in the hallway chanting Wingardium Leviosa and making it float. Uh, ah. Okay, Yulin has asked a really good question. What do I feel when I'm holding the spinning wheel? So I don't need the platform for this one. Let's take the one with the concrete. So this has a lot of angular momentum. And it turns out this is difficult to turn over. It's hard for me to change the angular momentum of this. I have to like really push on this. And if it were turning even faster, it would be very, very, very difficult for me to rotate. So that's what I feel when I'm doing it. It's easy to turn now, but if I'm trying to invert a large amount of angular momentum, uh, what if I tried to turn it while jumping? I am not that coordinated and I would probably fall on my face and break all of the broadcast equipment in here. So I'm not going to do that. So what I want to do now, uh, can I do the magic again? Yes, we can do the magic again. So this 
this piece of magic, I unfortunately am not going to be able to explain because we need more mathematics than we have. But the short version is this thing has a lot of angular momentum. And just like it is difficult for me to redirect the angular momentum of the spinning wheel, it's also difficult for gravity to redirect the angular momentum of the spinning wheel and change its axis. So if this is rotating real fast, then gravity, rather than making the thing fall, uh, let's see, I gotta get them going spinning the same way. Rather than making the thing fall, gravity simply makes it precess. And the mathematics for doing this are a little bit beyond uh, the vector language that we have now. But yes, it's super cool. Uh, yeah, they were going the same direction. If I did them in the opposite direction, it wouldn't work. Okay, so we have, we're going to do 20 minutes of mathematics, and then we're going to go out in the hallway and do the rocket car. So to do that, I'm going to have to switch lenses again. So before, I was using an ordinary sort of little zoom lens. So now I'm going to give me a minute because we want to do real blackboard math. So let's see, I have to take the camera off the tripod. And now I'm going to do these things in the right order so I don't break my camera accidentally. I'm going to take the tripod plate off of the adapter. It's stuck. Now you all can see just how messy my office is. All right, the adapter on the, the so I'm just going to talk out loud with what I'm doing. <laughs> Sorry about the delay. Just showing you all these cool things means that I have to switch lenses. Um, this, this super wide angle lens that I'm using is not designed for my camera, so I have to have an adapter. And the tripod plate is uh, bolted to that adapter, and I have to move it onto the camera, but the problem is it's now stuck. So what I'm going to do, this is something we'll learn about later, I have this pair of scissors, which I'm going to use as a lever, insert into this clip so I can get more torque, in turning it, and get it off. Physics has rescued our physics class. Did I ever get my bike back? No, I didn't. I have another bike that's far less cool, and I actually rode that today because I had to take my car to the mechanic this morning. Okay, so now I can change lenses. You are seeing all the messy stuff in my messy office. We'll be back in like 15 seconds, folks. I'm sorry about that. All right, so now we're putting the right lens on the camera. Now we're putting the tripod mount back on the camera. Now we're gonna clip the camera in the tripod. Again, this is why most people doing broadcast don't operate their own cameras. So this is the crazy blobby wide angle lens we were using before, which is why changing it was such a pain in the butt. It can live back on my table. The tripod can go back where it went. You're still at F8, which is fine. Now let's look at the board. Zoom that there. So this is why I had to write so big, right? Right, I'm trying, I have to set, reset one thing for this to work. There we go. Okay, now we can go back to Blackboard mode without any problems. Uh, yeah, the camera is getting sugary awake. 
Okay. <laughs> Point of view just woke up from 8 a.m. recitation. I'm sorry about that. <clears throat> it's just me in an office with way more stuff than I can operate. Okay. So now we need to do a little bit of mathematics. I want to do um, well. I got two things to introduce. One of them is just the definition of angular momentum. So what are these symbols? L is angular momentum. Now I don't have to write so big. Omega is angular velocity. And I is this thing that before I called rotational mass. And this equation that I have written up here looks a lot like momentum equals mass times velocity. So keep that comparison in mind. And just like ordinary momentum, angular momentum is conserved. But what is I? Yeah, this thing I've called rotational mass. Maxiplier has said, I is, is this letter representing inertia? Yes, it is. Um, OK. Lots of people have said other things. I'll talk about the Voyager Golden Record in a moment, um, like at the end of class. The bike wheels spinning themselves make it harder to fall over. That's why it's hard to stay on. It turns out the physics of bicycles are somewhat subtle. Part of it is that. Part of it is the rotational inertia of the wheels. Uh, like, like the bike that I had with fat tires was really, really stable for that reason. But there also there's a lot of other stuff going on in, um, on a bicycle. But Yulin is saying, well, why don't I just carry a big horizontally spinning wheel with me on a bicycle? Yes, you could do that. If you ever want to stabilize something uh, and, and keep something to have the same orientation, you can carry with you an object with very large angular momentum. So here, everyone has said, well, not everyone, uh, Max Applier said, rather than rotational mass, I should think of rotational inertia. So what is that? So this, this letter I that we have, this new thing, um, this is, you can either call it rotational inertia. But another word that you will see very commonly, which is in all the textbooks, so I will use it, is moment of inertia. Now, moment, there's nothing momentary about it, right? Moment is a mathematical word that refers to a certain kind of calculation. So what is this? So, Moment of inertia depends on two things that we saw. It depends on both the amount of mass and the distribution of mass. So we know it depends on the amount of mass. That's why we put concrete in the bike tire. But we know it depends on the distribution of mass because that's why the thing with the kettlebells worked. Right? So a way to write this in symbols is that the moment of inertia is equal to the, I'm going to color code this is the mass times the 
average squared distance from the mass to the center. Uh, yeah, so, so Porpoise proposed in chat, is it something like mass times average distance to the center? It turns out it's the average squared distance. You can calculate why that should be. Um, we'll see a little bit later, perhaps, why it's that. But for now, just remember it's the average squared distance. But for certain arrangements of matter, calculating the average square distance is hard, right? So if I have, for instance, matter arranged in a ring, I don't need to draw it quite so big. If I have matter arranged in a ring, like this, where here's my matter, then how far, what's the average distance of this matter from the center of the ring? If the ring has a radius r. It's just r squared, because all the matter is on the outside. So here, the moment of inertia is equal to the mass times R squared. We'll use capital R for this to match an, a convention that's usually used in textbooks. But what about a disk? So for a disk, all of the matter right, spread out over the whole thing, right? So here, What's the average square distance from the center now? Well, that takes calculus. We're not going to make you do the calculus. But if you were to do that calculus, you'd find that the number is 1 half. Another shape you could do would be a, a sphere. So like a, uh, a bowling ball. So if I have a bowling ball, right? Let's say this is solid. Now you have to do three-dimensional calculus to calculate the moment of inertia. It's not that bad. You learn how to do it in your calculus class. But for now, we can just write down the number, m r squared. So in general, um, if I've got, you know, I could imagine other things. I could imagine like a long line. Yes, m stands for mass, Kevin. Um, uh, I could imagine a long line of mass. I could imagine many other shapes, but in general, the moment of inertia always winds up being some number, which I represent with the letter lambda, times m r squared, where lambda is some number from 0 to 1. I will always tell you that you do not need to memorize any of these numbers. I will always give them to you. So, this is one idea. So, calculating the moment of inertia of a spinning object. So, I'm going to erase this, and I now need to give you another idea. Think back to where I threw the kettlebell. So I know that if I have, say, 
an object rotating around its center, so that x just means axis of rotation, I know here the angular momentum is equal to i omega. But to understand the, the situation where I threw the kettlebell, I also need to, to be able to calculate the angular moment, excuse me, the angular momentum of an object moving with some velocity. So this is for a spinning object, but I also need to know how to calculate the angular momentum of a small object moving in a line, right? Like the kettlebell I threw. So how am I going to do that? Now, one thing that, that you know is if this person, like, so let's think about that. So what we saw is if I throw this with some velocity v, you saw that the person would rotate in the opposite direction, right? But how much angular momentum does this object carry with it? That's the thing we don't know. Christopher, it doesn't, well, it has to be small because we're going to, it's going to depend on the radius. And if the radius, if it's like a big object, if it's some big potato, some like, you know, big, like, suppose rather than a, a little ball, if, if I had like a person sized thing, then um, its radius wouldn't all be one, just one number. Uh, Shane, I'm not sure what you mean. What, what variable is the spinning object? This is an omega here, just representing that when I threw the kettlebell this way, I started to rotate the other way. Um, so here, I'm just going to sort of state this. The angular momentum of that object that is being thrown is its mass times its velocity times, and this is, this is the bit that we may, we'll have to think about, the perpendicular part of its radius. So what do I mean by the perpendicular part of its radius? So this is just the, is, is the perpendicular component of the radius. You know that as this object moves, right, its angular momentum can't change. You know, I've, I've thrown it. Its angular momentum is not going to change while it's in the air. Um, so regardless of where on this line I am, the perpendicular part of the radius is that. And we're never going to wind up, at least on the, on the next quiz, we're not going to have hard trigonometry with this. So for a spinning object, as um, Christopher says, the angular momentum is just i omega. But for an object that is traveling past something, the angular momentum is this. So this is for a um, small object translating. So let me talk about, let me do the I throw a kettlebell problem to show you how this um, shakes out. And then we'll go out in the hall and do rocket car. This is really cool. So I'm going to erase the board here. So in past years, we would do a thing where Sam would claim I was kidnapped by aliens and that he was covering my class, but I had a, I'd built a jetpack while I was on the UFO, and I would probably rocket back into class at some point, and I'd be hidden behind a curtain, and then he would be like talking about Newton's laws of motion, and then I'd hit the, uh, the, well, literally the gas pedal, and come blasting into class. But now we're just going to go out in the hall and do it. So. Here's the here's how we understand this. So before you have me
and there's a kettlebell here. And okay, maybe I have a big scrawny arm sticking out because I'm not very strong. You know, afterwards, what happened? I am here. The kettlebell was thrown this way with some V kettlebell. My arm has some length, we'll call it L, for length of arm. And we know that I started to rotate. So how do we understand this? So we, we want to know the angular velocity. Well, I know that the initial angular momentum equals the final angular momentum. So what's the angular momentum in the beginning when I am just standing here with, <laughs> well, camera's different now. If I'm just standing here holding a kettlebell, it's zero, yeah, because nothing is spinning. So that term is easy. Well, afterwards, I've got the angular momentum of both me and the kettlebell. So I need expressions for both of them, and I know they add up to zero. So for me, should I use the formula for a uh, oh, yo, right. I can't use L here. Thank you. I can't use L here because L is angular momentum. So I'll call this R arm. There we go. So for me, do I use I omega or do I use MVR? So I need to use I omega because I am an object that is rotating, as Christopher says. And for the kettlebell, mass of kettlebell, velocity of kettlebell, times the length of my arm, the distance that it is from the center. Now, what do I use for my moment of inertia? Well. Uh, we looked at a couple of shapes, like a disc. A disc is the same as a cylinder. So um, I am basically a cylinder. This is where you make your jokes about spherical cows. And the moment of inertia of a cylinder is 1 half m r squared, just like a disc. So. I would wind up with, so I'm going to put in my moment of inertia, 1 half m me r me squared, so however, whatever the radius of my torso is, which depends on how many chocolate chip cookies I've had lately, plus m k v k r arm, and I know all of these things. Whoops, I forgot the omega. I know everything other than omega. So this is just the moment of inertia. And then, you know, estimate numbers, do math, calculate omega. You will do other examples of things like this in recitation and for homework. Um, hold that thought. So I think I'm, I think I'm actually going to, um, cause we didn't get as far as I was hoping. I think I may add the next example I was going to do as a new recitation problem, as a simpler recitation problem tomorrow. But now we have a rocket car to work with. So what, here's what we're going to do. Uh, I'm going to see if folks are out in the hallway. Oh, hey Sam. I'm sorry about that. Oh, it's okay. Okay. So I'm going to click well, we'll do that later. So I'm going to put my mask on.
I'm going to switch uh, the camera over to running on battery power. Sam, could you help me carry some equipment? OK, so the camera is now being powered by batteries. I'm going to unplug the HDMI monitor that I'm using. I'm going to un unplug my mouse. So we are, we're broadcasting right now. Okay. Could you just carry this computer? Yeah, we're sort of tangled here. Yep. How do you want to? So that needs to not get unplugged. So that n right. none of, that's fine. Yep. Shouldn't be caught on anything now. Right here, see it? Yeah, that, that's not, the other end is not plugged in. Okay, so, there yep. we go. So okay. if you could just carry this computer. You got it. So say hi to Sam. So Sam is carrying my broadcast laptop, which you can see. Ignore the left-hand side panel, Sam. That one doesn't mean anything. Oh. Yeah, because like we're live right now. Yeah. Um, they can't hear you because I haven't turned on the camera mic yet. Okay. So what we're doing is we're going to set this camera up down at the end of the hallway. So this is the lock and unlock thing. Okay. You can just set that down. I'm going to okay. I need to do this. Okay. So here's the zoom. Okay. So you can unlock that. Let me now. Do things. Let's see. Click that. that. Well, let's let's see, what see what the students, students have said. said. Okay. okay. So, so if you want to, this, this window, window here, here is whatever, whatever the students, students are typing. typing. Okay. So, so that's, that's live. live. Um, oh, wait, wait a minute. So, so they, they can, can hear you now, so Sam, Sam say something. Hola, estudiantes de física. <laughs> yes, yes, you can hear double. double. Now you can only hear single. Um, so is that thing ready to go? It's ready to go, just pull the pin out. All right. So when you go down there, just hang on Allie's door quick. Okay. She wants to watch, and I'll grab Yudi. All right. All right. So we have some people in the physics department want to see this. Okay, now I'm going to get out of range, range with my wireless, wireless headset, headset in, in, in just a few. few. So you won't be able to hear me as well. Is your mic still wirelessly broadcasting? Uh, I'm getting out of range, Sam. Okay. But it will be once I get in range. Okay, there's one professor who wants to watch, so we need to... Right, Walter, don't crash. Absolutely right. So Sam, you can just yeah, use the what zoom to. What's that, Walter? Feel free to like you know use the zoom as I get close. Yep, you got it. All right. So he's just way down What's there. Are you gonna video? Getting in the car. Did you pull the pin? What? Did you pull the pin? Nope. <laughs> this too, is this live streaming? All right, here we go. He's live streaming now. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so he was going pretty fast, so, and you can see the black skid marks on the floor from the brakes. <laughs> see, I told you you wouldn't make that turn going at speed. <laughs> so hi. Oh, oh, I guess I should be on that mic. Yeah, you should be on this mic. Yeah. So hi, folks. <laughs> <laughs> what are they saying? Mario Kart. 
<laughs> Men's fun. The paper's flying on the walls. So Jimbo wants a turn. <laughs> well, you know, you want a turn coming work for sure next could. semester. Where can I get one? That's a great question. I bought it at Toys R Us, which is now defunct, right? Well, so you need a bag of atoms. We'll turn this thing around. I mean, you, you need a bag of atoms and a thing that goes. That's what Walter rocket needs is. to drift earlier. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the car that I drive had like 98 horsepower when it was new. <laughs> So how does it work? Um, so it's conservation of momentum, as, as we've been discussing. So remember the problem with the astronaut with the jetpack, where you propel gas one way and then you go the other way? That's so funny. It's the same idea, yeah. So Sam's got it here. But yeah, I guess you couldn't see it as it whizzed by. I would have crashed right into the camera. So. All it does, it's propelling just carbon dioxide, the same gas we breathe out all the time. Um, so it's just a, a tank full of gas that we breathe out. And when, when I step on the pedal there, so the, the pedal on the right, right, that one is connected to a wire. Can we see the wire? No, it's, it's, yeah. Just, yeah, it's yeah. a big, big orange thing, right? It's connected to that orange thing, which then goes up to the fire extinguisher and pulls the handle of the fire extinguisher, which then, Sam, can you give it a, give it a... What? Yep. Scary. So, carbon dioxide comes out the back, and by conservation of momentum, just like on the problem Let you're doing for, side, huh? for homework, um, it, uh, momentum goes backwards, momentum goes forwards. And what other questions do people have? Um, Yes, you could make this, and, and you will. I mean, so model rocketry is a thing, right? People make model rockets. Uh, so we are at 1220. Uh, I'll hang around to answer people's questions. Uh, Sam's, uh, somebody says, dude's got 453,325 pockets. They're uh, hiking pants. <laughs> hiking pants. <laughs> Sam's hiking pants are becoming a meme. I have a pair at home. I know, right? <laughs> Sammy, could you move one more time? I'm so sorry. Oh, you're fine. The yes, the students can hear you. <laughs> Hola. <laughs> <laughs> so you dicey, do you want to drive? Oh, I think I won't be able to turn the corner. <laughs> crash into you guys. I get nervous. So, you won't go that fast so this is this is you dicey. She gone. makes Hola. everything in the physics department go. <laughs> You guys are so lucky, what a fun class. <laughs> so Sam, you want to drive down the hall? I doubt I'll go anywhere because you, you used all the gas. Oh, you think it's out? Do, yeah. Do I drove it one way? time, but it was almost out. Hang on to your camera. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, I, I, if I make it to that door, that'll be far. Yeah, Sam thinks he's out of propellant, so we'll see. Well, well, we'll find out. But I had it on camera and I didn't react quick enough. Oh, wait, hold on, I might have. See, by the time I got it, somebody so everybody's it. <laughs> <laughs> That's hysterical. Howdy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I couldn't get it there. So, uh, this, is, this is Alice, my girlfriend, who, who works as a biologist in our department. Oh, God. And that was hilarious. That was so good. Sam, <laughs> 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 you're So, this is Physics 211. I will see you all for um, office hours. I'm looking at the computer like you can see me. Uh, I'll see you all for office hours on Friday, uh, 9 to 11.45 in room 112. 
or on Zoom. Uh, I'll also see you on Monday from 3 to 5. Um, I'm going to send you all an email with the announcements today. I'm going to hit stop streaming now, and I'll see you later. Bye, everybody. Yeah, you should change it to his department profile Oh, gosh. This will be so good. That's hysterical. Bye, y'all. These kids are so lucky.